Okay. Hi, welcome to the Broadview Public Library District's book banter. We are going to be bantering about the book Anxious People by Frederick Backman. And welcome. Hello, Miss Yvonne. I am Tisha, and we are both librarians at the Broadview Public Library District in Broadview, Illinois. And we are back again with another book banter. Um, Yvonne, I like this book. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about what this book was about? Well, first of all, it's uh, the book's about anxious people. And it starts off right away with telling you that this is a book about idiots. And as you're reading it, you will figure out why they say that. Um, it starts off with a bank robber who wants to rob a bank. And then the bank robbery kind of turns into a hostage situation, not by his doing, but accidentally. And then it follows the lives of these people in the course of what happened between the bank robber taking him hostage and the time they were with him or the bank robber. <laughs> yep. So you said initially the book is titled Anxious People and the book is about anxious people. So everybody, let's go through a list of the characters. So if you haven't read this book, we are going to be telling you about the characters and the storyline. So we might give some things away. We probably will give some things away. Um, so if you want to read the book first and you don't want to know any spoilers, then you can come back and listen to this or watch this after you read the book. But we're probably we're going to give you some spoilers. So just be aware of that ahead of time um, before you continue listening to our book banter. But um, so like you said, there's a bank robber that accidentally takes people hostage people are viewing this apartment for some reason and it's important to know that this is what did it say it was new year's or new year's eve it was that it was new year's eve it was new year's eve which was also a weird time for people to be viewing apartments right. um <laughs> on new year's <laughs> eve i've never heard of that so it's new year's eve and there are what at least like eight or nine people at yeah, including the bank robber yeah at this apartment viewing on New Year's Eve, mind you. And there is two couples. There's a husband and wife, Rob, what's his name, Robert? Uh, Robert and Annalena are married. Oh yeah. And uh, what was the wife's, the, the, there's another couple. Ro and what was his wife, her wife name? Oh yeah, Ro and Julia. Julia, yeah. I think. And Julia is pregnant. So she's pregnant. There is um, the real estate agent who was supposed to be showing the apartment. There is Estelle, a kindly old woman viewing the apartment. There is Zara, a middle-aged um, woman also viewing the apartment. Um, did I leave anybody out? Um, that's it, except for the two, the two um, police officers who are not in the apartment. Right. Well, they are characters the in the book. And then, of course, mm -hmm. the bank robber right. who's holding the, supposedly holding the people hostage in the apartment viewing. So when the bank robber comes in, <laughs> he's holding a gun and one of the, one of the oh, hostages. Wait, you forgot a, oh, well, she wasn't really a hostage. Who? The, uh, the bank teller. Oh. Is in the beginning okay yeah we so the bank robber goes into a bank he tries to rob a bank but it's a cashless bank so there's no money in the bank to begin with <laughs> and he encounters this kind of snippety uh bank teller who was like what are you doing like what are you what this is a cashless bank so what are you doing like so right off the bat you kind of get a sense of the tone of this story is like how like a bank robber robbing a cashless bank that didn't know the bank think was cash, knows that, it was that the bank didn't have any money <laughs> <laughs> didn't have any cash so that tells you right off the bat what kind of bank robber this is and where you know um kind of how the story is going to go so that was the first thing and the bank robber and i forgot the teller's name i don't remember That's the teller's I, said. Name. I forgot the teller's name did they give her name for her 
this? They did. They told her that. I don't remember it. But the bank robber and the teller are having this like absurd conversation. And she doesn't seem worried at all that a person in a mask carrying, holding a gun has just come in the bank trying to rob it. And they have the most ridiculous conversation. Well, um, her thing was she was thinking the gun wasn't real. Right. You said it didn't look real, so she didn't really feel scared. <laughs> and then it was the amount that the robber was trying to get. He wanted a specific amount of money, mm-hmm. which was $6,500 or something like that. Something like that to pay yeah. the rent. <laughs> mm-hmm. He just yeah. wanted that amount. <laughs> And As if, else. right, which was odd because it's like, okay, I'm robbing the bank. I don't have any money to pay my rent this month, and I doubt I'll have money next month. So I'm just going to ask for this month's rent. Right now, just ask for a whole bunch right. of money. Like, so just give me all the money you have. <laughs> right. So you can continue paying your rent after this month passes. So be like, oh, I'm going to rob the bank this month. Then I'm going to come back next month, rob it again, get some more rent money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like, but I guess the bank robber had a plan beyond this month. So maybe I don't know. It was just it was craziness. It was it was crazy. But so yeah, you're right. The bank robber asked for a specific amount, <laughs> just that amount. Um, and a cashless bank. So the teller, they have this conversation, and the teller at the end says, Well, I'm just gonna call the police. <laughs> and then <laughs> I guess so. The bank at, at this point, the I guess the robber got scared and, and ran mm-hmm. out the bank. Panicked, so right? Why he or why the bank robber was trying to find an escape route? He really didn't have one because right. it wasn't really planned out. It was kind of like a last minute, I guess, thing. <laughs> because at the beginning of the story, they are telling you how the bank robber, you know, sent their kids to school, kissed them goodbye, and then just went to this bank to go rob it so they can pay their rent. <laughs> And then it wasn't all thought out. They didn't have a plan on how it's going to get away, what was going to happen. The police came. So the robber panicked. So you just start running. And the first door that was open was this apartment building. So he goes in the apartment building. And the only door in the apartment that was open was, of course, the one that they were showing that day. <laughs> and at this point, remember the bank robbers out of breath because they were saying yeah. like, running up the stairs. And right. the bank robber was, you know, my and the bank right. robber was out of breath. So when yeah, when so the bank robber busted into this that, apartment building, right, <laughs> with this gun, they can't they, he can't talk because he's out of breath trying to catch his breath and uh <laughs> with a mask on with a gun and they like what what. Right. <laughs> and so finally, one of the uh people from the open house from the apartment view and look up and was like oh my god we're being robbed the bank robber mind you didn't say a thing this one out of lady, breath can not say nothing exactly the bank <laughs> robber ain't said a word bank robber trying to catch his breath uh with the gun and it was like oh my god we're being robbed so everybody of course turns around and you know like take out all your jewelry mind you the bank robber ain't said a word but I one of the ladies anything right it's like wait are you robbing us or is he robbing us because you telling us what to do the bank robber ain't said don't ain't said nothing like i didn't say take out your jewelry i didn't say get your money out like (laughs) so so yeah thus begins this hostage situation where this bank robber is in this apartment viewing um with these i can't remember if it's like eight or nine or seven hostages um it's seven or eight, I believe, I including that eight. real estate. Yeah, because there's two couples, which is for Zaria, um, Estelle, mm-hmm. the bank robber, and then it was the the realtor. And then the dude later on that we find out is. Um, yeah, it comes later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so all together, yeah. <laughs> Um, so at this point, right, they're in this apartment, and there's a hostage situation going on, and some, and the police are called because he tried to rob the bank, and I guess they find out he went into this apartment building, and thus begins the hostage situation. So enter the two police officers, um, Jim and Jack, right? Right. Um, we Which find out father and son. We right, find, we find out that later. out a little later. We find out a little bit about their relationship and their dynamic about how they interact with each other on the police force. And then we find out, like you said, a little later that they're father and son. Um, and um, they are the lead police officers um, on this hostage situation while they wait for a hostage negotiator to arrive from God knows where, who's stuck I'm in traffic home. on New Year's Eve. 
because Stockholmers are, idiots. I guess, idiots, yes. but also considered to be, I guess, better <laughs> policemen than the ones that were there. <laughs> Mind you, again, it's New Year's Eve, so the police staff, the police officers are short staffed because it's New Year's Eve and no one, Everybody you know, so either off or doing something else. Right. And so these were the two that was called to the call. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so through the story, you kind of, uh, after you know, the people who are in the hot situation, kind of questioning the robber about why he's there after he doesn't say anything or. What was your plan? Or and they thought he was just you know stupid because they didn't have a he didn't have a plan. He didn't know what to do, you know what to ask for in this situation. He just didn't know. <laughs> so it didn't seem like they were scared. Nobody was really scared. They were just kind of thinking he was just a goofball, and that you know he didn't know what he was doing. So why be scared? Right, and they didn't think the gun was real either. <laughs> no, they kind of thought it was fake the way it looked. So throughout they kind of go back and forth with these, you know, crazy questions to the robber or they're bickering between themselves because everybody wants this apartment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you never hear from the realtor until later on. It's just the people walking around, you know, the apartment, they're, you know, all trying to compete against each other about, you know, this apartment, seeing who's going to get it, you know, what's wrong with the apartment and measuring stuff. They're going about their business, really, even though they're in a hostage situation. <laughs> right, a supposed hostage. So you get yeah. you get insight into the lives of all the people that are in the apartment, in the hostage situation. So every character has a story in this, in this hostage situation. They have a backstory. They have um, something that we find out later connects them in some kind of way. Um, right. So we find out later on that there's a connection between Zara and Zara sees a psychiatrist, a psychologist, right? She sees a psychologist. Right. Um, and we find out why she's seeing that psychologist. And we find out the connection between Jim and the psychologist and Zara. So it is kind of like a mix of like when you're reading this, you don't really like you're not expecting these characters to be connected in any way but like the author does a really good job of unraveling the stories these intricate stories these backstories and weaving them together so seamlessly that it's like whoa like you didn't expect it to be what it was like I didn't see half of the things he said I didn't see them coming at all right and, and he did it in a not confusing way we right, connected exactly. the dots really well throughout the story. Like with each page, it, it you know it followed a certain pattern. You kind of you were able to follow the story and the connections that it created. You know, as the story went along. Right. I was only confused about one thing in the story, and that was the robber's identity. <laughs> right. The bank robber. They never <laughs> reveal. And to the end, they don't say who the bank robber is. That like they don't give a name Not for the bank name. robber. No. At all, and. That was the only confusing part to me is the bank robber. Like I was like, did I miss did I miss the story that he told about the bank robber? Because in the beginning he told one story, but then he told the identical story right later again on with a different twist on it. And I was like, right. did I miss something? Like and maybe so, we shouldn't give that away. Let people Yeah, that's what I said. I'm not gonna give that one away. I yeah. just like I said, different <laughs> twist on it. So I won't give that yeah. away. But the description was with one way and you was thinking, okay. Right. And then by the end of the story, you hear the exact same story. Like, oh my gosh. <laughs> right. I was going to say with a different twist on it. Right. But, so I thought that was ingenious too. I kind of did, but I still was confused about how we arrived at that point. I know. Point. I, I went back to try to read it, but I still can't figure out where it crossed over. Right. Me neither. So maybe that's one of the mysteries about this book. Maybe. I can't figure out. Because even the police officer, even the younger one, even the son, I don't know if he initially was were saying the pronouns, but then later on, how did he come to that conclusion about the bank robber with the real estate I, agent? I, I don't, don't know. I guess because he couldn't figure out, since it wasn't her, and it wasn't none of the other ones, that it had to be somebody else. But I mean, and in the I beginning- guess when they were, when they all left that apartment, mm -hmm. I guess that was the only logical conclusion. 
after but I mean, they figured out who walked out the apartment. But I mean, in the beginning, when they interviewed the um the bank teller and they tried to get a description, remember everybody was being very um very elusive, vague, very, very elusive. like very like tell certain kind things. of they were being jerks to the police officer yeah. like they weren't answering their questions no they, were they, being... were answer, they would do a question with a question like well why they like if they say well what happened here but why do you ask me that they would <laughs> right they would they be was... like that and it was like pulling teeth trying to get information from everybody so it was like frustrating to the officers because you know they're trying to do an investigation and they are trying to play dumb like they don't know what happened. <laughs> and they was being they was being mean now, like especially like Zara. Like she didn't answer not one question. She was answering questions with the question, trying to psychoanalyze them and being sarcastic. Or insulting and, them in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. And, she was after reading this book, you'll see that Zaria is that type of that's her personality though. Mm -hmm. She's one of those people who insult you in a, like a nice way sort of no you know? she wasn't being nice about well, it she, she was kind of say something like <laughs> kind of vague and you kind of like what? <laughs> <laughs> she was insulting you, but like, like you said, like she wasn't outright insult. She was, like you said, right. being elusive about it. But you were like, wait, yeah. was that a, was that an insult? Did she just? That's call what I'm me saying. It's kind of like you have to think about it. Was she trying to insult me? Right, it's like, <laughs> like with her psychiatrist, psych psychologist. It's like, right. She was even frustrating to her. She was going yeah. off on tangents, talking about bears and all kind of stuff <laughs> instead of answering the question. It's like, how did we get to talking about bears in the forest? And like, what? So all of the later on witnesses in the hostage situation they were all being elusive they weren't being cooperative with the police right they were there being interviewed and now i mean we find out why at the end but like when you're reading it you're like these people are jerks like don't they <laughs> right like you're being interviewed by a police officer you just be telling them the truth answering the questions right and they but like they weren't worried about that they was just trying to either throw them off or just mm -hmm. annoy them in such a way that they would stop asking questions. <laughs> and then the bank robber kept saying worst hostages ever, like. <laughs> right, like if I was gonna take a hostage, this would just be ridiculous. Right. <laughs> These people are uncorroborated. <laughs> yeah, so you, we don't wanna tell too much about the story because if we tell you the story, then it's kind of gives it You won't wanna read it, right. You won't, and we think right. you should definitely read this book. This was a really this good book. This is definitely a opinion. good read. Yes. It's, a, it's a fast read, it's a page turner. You won't be able to put it down, trust me, because you are so, you be ancient yourself, basically, to figure it out. And right. then when you get to the end, it would be a shocker. You'd be like, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to make you want to go back and read it again. Like, can I miss something? <laughs> right. And when you piece everything together, like the author pieced everything together, like he said, it wasn't confusing. It was so ingenious the way he, 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 like, close the threads like he right. left you like he he put a string out he put a string out and then like he came back slowly, and connected yeah. <laughs> all of it and just wove this intricate imaginative ingenious story and he like you said he closed it out so well you weren't left wondering like oh what was what happened with this person what happened with that person he he concluded everybody's story in in such a easy magnificent way that it's like it like you said it was almost impossible to put it down because you wanted to know you got invested in what was going on with these people like Estelle right. like, was really like what's going on with Estelle each character right what's yeah. going on with Zara like why is she like this or what's going on with Leonard we mentioned another character was Leonard what's going to happen with those two like you know and then another another thing that they talk about in this story is a bridge and you get you get a sense of why Zara is like that based on something that happened in her past. Same thing with Jack, the young son, why he is like that based on something that happened in his past. Same thing with the psychologist. Same thing even with Estelle, even with the bank robber. Like they all have this connection. Have some connection with the bridge. Like the right. bridge in some ways had connected them all mm -hmm. in this story. So And the I think the author was trying to show us that even though we don't see people every day or we don't know the people like that we pass by every day, that somehow, some way, we touch each other's lives in some maybe minute way that you didn't even think about. <laughs> that, that is so true. And like I said, this, like I said, this story connects these people in a way that 
you would have never thought like, and it does it so well. It does it so well. Um, so I really like this book. Um, I'm glad you picked this. This was a very good pick um, for a book banter. And and there, again, there's so much more stuff we can talk about, but we don't want to give too much away All right. the story because, again, this is a great book. Um, we want everyone to read it. It is available here at the Broadview Public Library District. Um, for checkout, if you are interested in Anxious People by Frederick Backman. Um, Yvonne, did you want to say anything else? Do any, say I anything just else? wanted to add, I think this would be a great book to read, like for a book club. Mm -hmm. You would have so much to talk about. Yes. When all of you try to get together and analyze all these characters in the book, it's almost like a play. Right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't it seem like a play? If they put yeah. this on stage, you would enjoy watching it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. So but like definitely said, yeah. come back, check it out. It is a great book. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there's so, there's all these characters. I think there's what you said. I can't remember seven or eight or nine characters. And just imagine if we just broke down every single character and the story that he told about them, like literally we can go on and on right. and then go back and like you said, connect the dots on how all these people were connected what connected them what brought them together how and then after the whole situation how they you know how they interacted with each other how you know just like the group they formed the camaraderie ship they formed then just everything so there was so much going on in this book but going on in a good way it was very good read um very it was a page turner it was and it also shows at the end how their lives, you know, connected to each other lives at the end when they didn't know mm -hmm. in the beginning that they actually somehow had, you know, crossed paths mm -hmm. somewhere. That's right. Yep. Like you said, how, they, how they're all connected. So the author makes it, like you said at the beginning, says this is a book about idiots, but then he goes on to say a lot of other things. This is a book about friendship. This is a book about love. This is a book about relationship. This is a book about grief. This is a book about sorry this is about forgiving you know so many things happened in this story um with you know just you know just the evolution of relationships between the husband and the wife between the two police officers the dad and the son between the psychologist and her patient between Estelle and her husband you know you you know she tells a story about her husband parking the car this whole time and uh <laughs> and you find at the end of the story well that yeah true. you kind of know, yeah <laughs> so you, know, you kind of husband ain't parking yeah no so car. as you're reading it it's really so, yeah it's thought-provoking it really is it makes mm -hmm. you think it is and it's it is it's, when you, you know, get through reading it about all the characters and everything mm -hmm. that went on in their lives and everything and that invested. made possible yeah. going in your life to kind of make you think about hmm, that person i saw yesterday at the store or mm -hmm. it's that type of book and it, and it is a funny book it is like it's funny too so it's some parts is funny it. but it's also <laughs> like you said it makes you it you think it makes you think it's uh you know it makes you show compassion it's like when you're reading this you feel for these characters like you you know you're invested in them and you kind of cry along with them you laugh along with them and so yeah it was it was a really good book very well written i really enjoyed it it was it was definitely i enjoyed this one more than any other i think book we've done so far <laughs> yeah, this was good. This was funny. I like this one. So um, yeah, so again, this book is available. It's also available on Media On Demand. If you have a Broadview Library card, it is available as an audiobook to listen to or as an ebook for download on Media On Demand with your Broadview Public Library card. Um, and uh, yeah, Yvonne, did you have anything else to say or are we all? Just check out the book, read it, let us know. Yeah, leave How you like comments it. below. Yeah, leave some you comments below. Oh, well, um, yeah. And please join us again for our next book banner. What is our next book, Tish? So uh, um, our next book is going to be actually in July. We are going to be starting our summer reading program in June. And we're going to take a small break from doing a book banter to do some other uh, weekly small weekly book programs in June. So please visit our website, broadviewlibrary.org and check out what we're gonna be doing for summer reading. We're gonna be back with you for another book that has been highly publicized, talked about, recommended, um, called The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. So if you check this book out and you wanna join us for our book banter, by all means, come and join us. We'd love to hear your opinions, um, share your thoughts and your say if you want to join us for The Lost Apothecary. But we'll be back in July for our next book banter. Good. 
Thank you. All right. Thank you, you for then. joining us. Bye. Bye.